welcome to another interview with Dr. Eli Sheff. Today I am talking to Lexi Silver, who is an expert on dating, and she is the media director of Seek, Discover, Connect, or SDC. Thanks so much for joining us today, Lexi. Thanks so much for having me, Eli. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate being consulted for something like this. This is a really great project that you're undertaking. Thanks. Well, you are definitely the woman in the know of <laughs> how to date. As a dating expert, you've written all sorts of exciting, not only media content, but books. Yes. Erotic interactions. And if I remember correctly, one of them was called Shamefully Filthy or something like that. Oh, sh yes. It was reviewed as uh, Shamelessly Filthy Erotica by ASN Lifestyle Magazine. Yeah. You've got to love Shamelessly Filthy when it comes to erotica. That's yes. That's the place for it. Yes. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> well, today I'm wondering uh, what you think about dating for people who want consensually non-monogamous relationships. I think um, a lot of people aren't really sure where to find that or how to date. So maybe we can start with some pros and cons and tips for dating. Uh, well, I think there are so many different places that you can meet people. And sometimes even the, the tips that I can give you, you can meet someone at the deli or the supermarket or something like that. It's, I mean, you know, these days it's a bit different, but you know, typically you can right, meet with people. The pandemic. Yeah, it just it changes the dating game just a little bit it when does. it comes to that, uh, unfortunately. But it is a good time to start to learn how to seduce people, and uh, I guess play the long game, you know, until you're right. finally able to reconnect. So um, there are a lot of different places where people who are consensually non-monogamous, whether they're in a relationship or they're single, uh, or they're already in multiple relationships. I mean. Could, can you really ever have too many partners is a question that you might want to ask yourself. So, uh, you know, there are places like, for example, sdc.com, which is made for open-minded people. So if you identify as just open or swinger or monogamish or poly, you can find people who are also open-minded and have that kind of orientation too when it comes to their relationships. So you're already walking a walking into, you're already getting into a scenario where you have a higher chance of connecting with people who are like-minded. And there are other dating platforms out there as well that are made for people who are open-minded. And, you know, uh, under other circumstances, of course, there are tons of clubs and you know there are you know swingers clubs sex clubs where you don't have to go to have sex you can just meet people there and for me that has been a really great way to meet a lot of people who are open minded maybe nothing happened with them but just great people to talk to and then meeting other people through them as well uh, that is a really wonderful way having a meet and greet kind of event at a kind of event at these kinds of clubs is a wonderful way to do that. And sometimes it's outside of a sex club. It could be a, a meetup at a restaurant where just a bunch of people from the Facebook group meet up and talk to each other and, you know, get to know each other a little bit better. Those are really fantastic ways to do that. And as you can tell, these are all assisted by digital technologies that we have available to us. So that helps make dating a little bit more accessible. So, Is there anything you would recommend people avoid if they're trying to find consensually non-monogamous partners? Uh, I think uh, there are a couple of mistakes that people tend to make when they're first starting to open up. So on the part of couples who are walking into a scenario where they want to either just experiment sexually and be, you know, kind of enter a, a, a different uh, phase of their life and just have a threesome or do or, or try something like that and see where that goes. You know, I, I find that sometimes couples don't talk to each other enough about what it is mm -hmm. that they are looking for or what they're expectations or hopes might be when I are walking into the scenario. So often what ends up happening is that once you're starting to date, uh, the, uh, you, you, if you're in a dyad, if you're a couple, uh, both people start to maybe argue about what it is, you know, uh, the fact that they're not aligned on what's going on. Maybe the kind of person that one person is looking for is not the same as what someone else is looking for. We all know it's hard enough to have chemistry with one individual, let alone two at the same time. So it does complicate things. So I think a lot of couples go into dating 
and they just assume that it is going to be kind of easy for them to find somebody or that they're both going to click with the same person. And that is not always the case. It's, it, can, it is obviously, it can be the case, but right. I think having those false expectations going into it, not talking to each other first before you both agree on how you're going to do it. And also if you're a couple and you are, for example, on SDC or another dating platform, you both should agree on who is going to manage the account and how you're going to manage incoming communications from people who are interested in dating both of you. How are you going to manage different kinds of scenarios where you could be potentially meeting somebody, uh, you know, for a date? Uh, and how is that going to go? So there has to be a ton of communication even before you get into the the dating dating part of it so you can walk in knowing that you've agreed upon these basic terms and then you can discuss from there of how you want to go and when you're single and you're dating <clears throat> sorry when you're single and you are looking to be you know, explore openly and just see what's out there. And you, you know, you don't identify as having a monogamous mentality, which, you know, folks like myself as well and you don't because that it's just not for us. And that's why these, these places like SEC as well are breeding grounds for other people like us who just can't, you know, um, can't do the monogamous thing. So single folks who are on there as well, maybe they've tried the monogamous thing and it's not working, or maybe they are a little bit more monogamous monogamous minded, but they are starting to open up to new possibilities and they just want to see what's out there. So for single folks who are starting this off, sometimes things that they do wrong is uh, be a little bit too aggressive. So if, for example, yeah, that, that can be a thing. And uh, conversely as well, you know, not being aggressive enough, there are lots of things that, that could happen. It depends on a lot of factors, of course. But sometimes if somebody wants to approach a couple, for instance, and they're single, um, sometimes the approach is very much more, uh, it's, it's a little, it can be disrespectful to the couple in the sense that you're not respecting the fact that both folks who are in this relationship are going to be communicating with each other and you have to be respectful about the way you are approaching them. Starting off with sending dick pics, for example, is a, is a no, no matter what kind of dating you're trying to do. And, you know, asking people what it is that, you know, hi, you know, intro just introducing yourself, being natural, explaining what it is that you're looking for, being honest about what you're looking for. I think that's super, super crucial. So being respectful, communicating with each other, if you're already in a couple or in any other kind of relationship, making sure you're always on the same page about what's going on. I think those are things uh, to do that people tend to do wrong when they're first starting this entire experience. Oh, and one more thing. If you are a couple looking for a unicorn I, not all of us like being called that, by the way, which are traditionally known as uh, single women or, uh, or people identifying as women who are open to playing with, um, usually in a typical heteronormative couple, a ma both men and women. So are either bisexual, bi bi uh, heteroflexible, or bicurious, or some combination of those. Uh, so... If you are looking for a woman like that uh, or someone like that to have a threesome with, don't advertise in your profile, we're looking for a unicorn. Tell us about you. We want to know what are we getting ourselves into when it comes to uh, this potential threesome scenario? What kind of adventure am I going to have with you guys as a couple? Tell me about you as a couple. I want to know about your dynamic. I want to I want to feel it. So I think that's something that a lot of couples just, it's so underrated. They don't do it, but that's what I as a unicorn want to be reading. So just a tip there. Great. That was a fantastic <laughs> tip. Absolutely. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your wealth of dating advice with us. I really appreciate that. My pleasure. You are not a counselor or a therapist, but you're a smart woman who's been doing this a long time with good ideas. So I want to know if you have any suggestions for counselors and therapists who really want to be effective in serving consensually non-monogamous clients. 
Yeah, and I think it's very hard for uh, for therapists and counselors who are who don't have that background of, for themselves or who have never treated somebody who has had who is in any kind of open relationship. Um, I think there's a lot of blame that tends to fall upon that part of a person's life when it comes to the therapist, when it, when it comes to talking about how, what kind of issues the client might be experiencing or what kind of relationship issues they might be having. It's not the non-monogamy necessarily that is to blame. It is maybe the way the people are approaching what it is that is going on. So I think it's just important to, if two people, let's say this is a couples therapist, are committed to being in an open relationship, and that is a goal of theirs, that is something that they both agreed upon, that is something they want, help them work toward that. So just take it like any other kind of relationship. All couples or all different people argue this is a normal thing, but um, blaming it on the open relationship, trying to eliminate that from the equation and say, maybe you should take a break or, or stop doing so, or that kind of thing, that is not a healthy thing for somebody to hear, especially when that's their orientation. Um, and it's not just a choice. It is just how they are. For me, it is an orientation. I can't be any other way. So don't blame it on that because then it's like you're blaming it on the person for just being who they are. So um, that is my main tip for, for you. Excellent. Nice. <laughs> From Lexi Silver, dating expert extraordinaire. <laughs> Thank you, Eli. My God, I love Thank it. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much for your time. And My I pleasure. appreciate that. My pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate it too. And I can't wait to see what else you have coming. So I'm excited I'm about this series. Me too. <laughs> Thanks. So anybody out there, if you are looking to date multiple partners, check out sdc.com. Definitely. And you can check out LexiSilver.com too. I have a lot of information about open relationships and a lot of other erotic things that you might enjoy. Wonderful. <laughs> Filthily erotic. That sounds great. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Have a filthy day. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.